Let's hope this is the first of a batch of classic 20th Century Fox films to get the 4K disc treatment. This is Jan de Bont Speed from 1994, and it's another very good 4K release. I had to be cajoled into visiting the Leicester Square Theatre to see this film. All of my work colleagues had seen it and they all seemed to be rather taken with it. And so we finally ventured down to see it at the end of October 1994. By then it was on in the Lesser Studio 2 because the Leicester Square Theatre had been subdivided into two studios. And the last time I was there a few years ago it was a hole in the ground. Heartbreaking. I really do enjoy the film. It has many flaws, but the ambition of the filmmakers is obvious. They wanted to make an all-out action blockbuster, making the most audacious use of the latest Dolby sound. And although the script is sometimes terrible, the acting occasionally a little unconvincing, and the endless circumstances that occur in order to reach the next climactic situation a little unbelievable, the film delivers exactly what it set out to do. This is another film that I know particularly well because after its theatrical run, Duran obtained as part of their Fox deal the rights to release full-length anamorphic prints on Super 8. And although I can't recall if this is the actual review print, it is a first-run print and it is of exceptional quality. We have screened extracts from this on the British Film Collectors Convention's 24-foot cinemascope screen and it still looks really good. The sound on these releases was quite often considered not to be up to the standard of the imagery and this is why I purchased the PAL Laserdisc and from that I re-recorded the stereo sound on the Super 8 print. The results were rather impressive, however when the DVD came out with Dolby Digital Sound I also purchased that so that I could run the Super 8 picture with the sound from the DVD. It really did feel like I was back at the Leicester Square Theatre. VistaVision was used for the model shots which explains why there is no image degradation during these special effects scenes. However, keep a look out during the action sequence where the bus is about to take the leap across the missing section of the flyover. It's clear that the camera is being under cranked as the bus speeds past the camera, so keep an eye on the trailer behind that is transporting all the policemen because their movements clearly give the game away. Despite all its flaws, Speed was a runaway success. A worldwide gross of $350 million on an estimated budget of just $30 million tells its own story. It resulted in a sequel, but without Keanu Reeves in the lead role, it was not a box office success and has never been a particularly popular film. But I rather like it, and being gifted a 35mm print by Keith Wilton, my boss at the BFCC, is why. It is actually the best quality 35mm print in my collection, and I have run it often. The aspect ratio is 2.4 to 1, and the sound is now DTS HD 5.1. The sound was always good, and it's one of those action films that will sound good on just about anything, even if you're only running your sound through built-in television speakers. The picture is another that required me to turn the HDR down a little and if you have a Panasonic player with this button on your remote control it is easy to do, but hopefully all other players have the facility via options or the setup of the player somewhere. Without putting the HDR down to light environment, the standard Blu-ray disc actually looks superior to the 4K. It is another excellent Blu-ray, but once the HDR is sorted out satisfactorily, the 4K is superior as usual. It is yet another release that is just like running a 35mm print in your home, albeit without the drumming of the projector in the background. So if you like speed, I do recommend this is worth a purchase. However, I haven't seen the previous Blu-ray, which I believe was 2007, but I can't believe it comes close to this. So I'm afraid it's another 4K to go on your ever-lengthening shopping list. We actually ventured out to purchase this title, as well as a few others yesterday, and took a trip into Plymouth City Centre. 
John Perry at Mondo Celovec Movies is often talking about his shopping trips where he mooches about through HMV and CEX. And as we did the same thing yesterday, henceforth these such trips will be known as the Mondo Mooch. It was good to get back out again and there are a few titles I picked up that I do plan to do video reviews of, but the film that has received the most requests for me to review I believe is the 4K of Apocalypse Now and I have already been putting things together for that so there will be a review of that coming soon. I've asked John Amondo Celovec to also do a video review of Apocalypse Now and also Leon at Leon Talks Film. Leon is quite a youngster compared to most of us but he has a real enthusiasm for movies that I find infectious and interestingly he has got the more elusive six disc set of Apocalypse Now so these two chaps doing additional reviews should give us alternative perspectives on what they think of this title. So getting on to the other titles I purchased yesterday, there's another new release at the moment I'm sure many of you will know, well Last Action Hero, that is largely set in a cinema really isn't it, it's a bit like Cinema Paradiso on steroids but that should be a cracking 4K release if the previous Laserdisc is anything to go by. And another film that so many people have asked me to look at, I wasn't going to review it because I've, I only ever saw this in the cinema and I haven't seen it since. I didn't particularly care for it at the time, but enthusiasm is infectious and so many people have said they think this 4K is really good. I'm now really looking forward to revisiting The Matrix. And my video of The Fifth Element from a couple of weeks ago seems to have done really well and I'm really thankful to all the people who have advised me of films that look similar and Heavy Metal is the one that comes up the most. But many people have said that Luke Besson's Valerian has got a similar look. Don't expect it to be as good as The Fifth Element they said but if you like the look of The Fifth Element you should like this. So I'll take a look at that one soon, might do a video review of that if it's really good. And I was also thinking about doing a review of the recent remaster of Batman vs Superman but I took a look at the trailer on that and um, that didn't look like Batman to me so I've compromised, I've done a deal with the people that were asking me to look at that and I've picked up Christopher Nolan's trilogy, the Dark Knight trilogy so if all goes well with that we should have a video review of that coming soon, we'll see. But anyway, another thing that came through the door recently was the latest issue of my favourite movie magazine, Cinema Retro. It comes out three times a year, it's subscription based, cinemaretro.com. I think it's 1995, including post for the three issues here in the UK. Now, I can't really tell you how good this one is because since it came through the door, I haven't got a look in. My wife grabbed it and she's been reading it ever since. But anyway, while we were out yesterday doing our Mondo Mooch, I did know that in the next issue they're doing an extensive retrospective review of Ice Station Zebra. So for once I've got ahead of the game because usually I read the reviews in here and then I have to go out and buy the films. They've cost me a lot of money over the years. And while in HMV yesterday I finally remembered because I saw it on the shelves Cinema Retro had been involved with the 101 films release of The Deep and so I was able to snap this up and this is quite a delight to find inside. It's not a miniature of the magazine, it's actually um, a reworking of Dave Worrell's fabulous article on the deep that I can well remember reading and I read that and I thought I've got to get that disc and of course every time I've forgotten but finally I saw it there yesterday and was able to snap it up so I'm really looking forward to seeing that film again for the first time in oh god 40 years who knows but anyway I think that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to create even more content like this in the future. Until the next video, bye bye for now.